How did you uh, get involved in Halloween too? Well, I went on an audition, just as I did for most of the roles I did um, throughout my career. I actually w am embarrassed to say that I had never seen <laughs> Halloween 1. So when I went on the audition, I really had no idea exactly what to expect. And I did the audition, I did the callback, and then they offered me the role, and I, I wasn't really quite sure if I should take this role or not. And uh, Rick Rosenthal and Deborah Hill very kindly showed me uh, a copy of Halloween 1 in the office one day. I said, okay, I want to be part of that. <laughs> Tony? And I, like everyone else, went on an audition, got the part, and we had no discussion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Well, before I say how I got involved, I need to thank my agent for arranging for me to be the only leading man on this dais with all these beautiful ladies. <laughs> only time I've been a leading man. Uh, I did uh, Rick Rosen Rosenthal's student film at the American Film Institute. Uh, that's a two-year program, I believe, is it, or three? Two-year program. And uh, those invited back for the second year, uh, have they pick very few people also for their second year they have a chance to make a uh, motion picture. Before that, it's always video work. And his motion picture was a film called Moonface with only two characters in it, of which I was one. And uh, I got a phone call one day, and he said, I'm doing a film called Halloween 2, and I'd like you to be the security guard. It was to go out and meet the uh, casting associate at that time, Nancy Jacoby, whose husband was the attorney that has all the Jacoby and Myers commercials. And That's kind of uh, strange, Jacoby yeah. and Myers. Yeah. You know, a little bit of a oh, wow. kind of a connection there. That's you know, right. fate. Never thought of that before. It's all about fate. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, how I wound up on the set. Hi. Um, Rick Rosenthal and his wife, Nancy, who was also in the movie, uh, we were all in class together. And he actually, it was his first feature, so he decided to uh, make it available to people who were in acting class with him. So Ana Alicia, who was in class, and Leo Rossi was in class, and uh, about four or five other people. And um, actually, he wanted me to play the role, and it was written for a 55-year-old white woman. <laughs> and um, so I read the script, and I came in to audition, and the producer, Deborah Hill, said to Rick, uh, this is not the right person for this role. She is not a 55-year-old white woman. And Rick said, no, but I think she's got the authority, and I think she can, you know, and, and I think she can do it. So I came back to, uh, for the callback, and they said, okay, if the cast is young and beautiful, then you can be the uh, head nurse. And of course, the cast was young and beautiful, and so I got the role. And when I showed up in makeup, um, the makeup people said, um, <coughs> what role are you playing? And I said, I'm playing Mrs. Alves. And they said, oh my God, you know, and they, because it still said 55 year old white woman, you know, whatever. Um, so that's how I got into Halloween too. <laughs> uh, just to, out of curiosity in regards to your character, um, was, uh, I mean, since your death scene was never shown, you're just shown laying there, was there ever anything shot for an actual on screen death scene? No, um, fortunately for me, I, in all my entire career, I have never died on screen, uh, but that scene where I'm lying with uh, 400 pounds of blood on the ground, uh, what they did is they strapped me in a gurney, and uh, then they said to me, do not, do not move, do not get up, and then they said, lunch, <laughs> and uh, I said, what do you mean, what do you mean, you can't leave me here, and they said, we can't disturb the blood, so you can't get up. And so they just left me there, and um, it was, you know, as, and for hours. And it was just, you know, I thought, well, this, I should have died on camera. It would have been easier. Well, actually, in the TV version, you don't die. Really? Yeah. You, 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 oh, you nev never just see me never again. see you die. You never so see you never, see, never see, see the blood. That's right. That's true. So you, you lived and died in the same movie. That's kind of cool. Well, you didn't die. You were dead. So. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> um, just uh, as far as uh, I know, the actual location for the hospital was uh, the Veterans Hospital in Van Nuys was the exterior 
Uh, but I was told by a few other cast members that the interiors were shot at a couple different locations. Do you, anybody recall where those were? I think we had a hospital here in Pasadena, didn't we? Just uh, north of the freeway? I had heard that that's, as well, but somebody yeah. said it had been torn down. I don't oh, know. that's yeah. sad. I don't know if that's true. I uh, thought there was another hospital that was not in Pasadena that was also out somewhere. What, well, the exteriors were out at the Veterans Hospital on Spalvada. I, do, yeah. I do know that. Yeah, what was was that convalescent uh, hospital yeah, we, we were, used? We, that we was, also yeah. shot in a convalescent Yeah, that was I just remember that Rick gave a lot of directions. Somebody knows the answer? He knows the answer. Even though... Yes. Morning that's side. correct. Was that's that the it. One Is it still there? No, I think they tore it down. Oh. But See, I remember, everybody I, thinks, but nobody knows. I just remember Rick Rosenthal, when we were at the Veterans Hospital, kept giving a lot of directions to keep it down, keep it down. There's sick people out here. Keep it down. <laughs> but it's I hard to go, ah! <laughs> keep it down. But I think I remember, do you remember, Tawny, too, there was, another, it wasn't, there was another hospital that we were in that was very secluded, that was completely empty, right. and I think that was the yeah. convalescent home, and mm -hmm. that wasn't in Pasadena. No. Um, and the that one I worked at was in That's where I Pas shot most of the things. Really? The one I remember working in was in Pasadena. We don't know. We no, don't I remember. Sure. Is that I, where I the infamous hot tub Pasadena. was? <laughs> Is the infamous hot tub in that Pasadena? Was Pasadena? That was Pasadena yeah. because I remember very Pasadena. well yes, walking exactly. to walking across the parking lot where the cast and crew, ca you know, parked every morning, and that was definitely in Pasadena. <laughs> now, as far as uh, some of the, I know that there's there was a lot of reshoots done. I guess Carpenter himself uh, actually did added some scenes. I I believe you were in one of them, Pamela, the one in Sierra Madre. Mm -hmm. Was that's correct? Uh, were were uh, any of you? In any, I wasn't also you. Yeah, uh, I was, you, uh, I your was death scene was added. Yeah. Was now I think uh, was that the claw hammer scene. Yeah, the claw I think hammer that scene. Was. Yeah, because uh, originally I was just strung up from the uh, from the ceiling of the uh, the hospital. Was uh, that ever shown? The actual being uh, hung up, or was it? Kind no, of I think it was just uh, uh, Jamie Lee was trying to escape, and it was dark in there, and she was backing up, and she backed into the corpse while I was hanging, and turned around, and she screamed and freaked out and clumb out a small window that was was there. And I don't know for sure, but I, as I recall, that I think was shot in the basement of the Lincoln Heights Jail, but I did a couple other horror films there at the Lincoln Heights Jail, so my mind's kind of cloudy, <laughs> especially when they hang you from a harness. <laughs> it gets very cloudy. <laughs> Were either uh, Tani or Gloria, were you involved in any of the reshoots? No reshoots. I was dead. No? Just yeah. dead? No. Yeah. Yes. They, bl they drained my blood out of me. I was finished. <laughs> How about I was dead, but they brought me back to life for a reshoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about uh, any, uh, just out of curiosity, anybody keep anything from the film? Any of the, uh, props, nurse outfit, anything? Hot tub water? No, listen. Th <laughs> this was a low budget film. Okay, it was a they made low sure they got it all back. budget film. But you know, I remember my first movie was California Suite, and it was a huge movie, and it was you know a lot of money, and we had a, a, a craft service table that was from one end to the other. And then I arrived at Halloween Two, which was my second movie, and it was I remember there were ice cream bars, <laughs> and um, and I thought, oh, oh this is another way to make movies, okay? And that was pretty much, so we didn't, I don't think we got to take anything. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think so. the only thing I kept was, we had a wrap party down on Santa Monica Boulevard, and um, I think it was Crescent Heights in Santa Monica, was it? Uh, it was a roller skating rink or some kind of a, some kind of a, yeah, roller skating rink, I think it was. And they gave us a, a bunch of orange t-shirts. Well, we did have a Halloween two jackets. Yeah, oh, that's that. We have jackets. jackets. Yeah. Yes, oh, we have let's wear jackets. them tomorrow. Okay. Those are gorgeous. I only got the t-shirt. <laughs> no, those jackets. <laughs> Those jackets are great because I remember I bought two. I got two because I got one for my son, and so I have two. I have two of them. But anyway, uh, we have any questions? Of course, we have to discuss the hot tub scene. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> I know that Pamela, the towels, when he places his hand on your arm, it's wrapped around your shoulders, but then when your face is being done to the water, it just happens to make it down to your waist. I don't know how that happened very quickly, but I, I want to ask you, when was it a stunt woman who was being dunked into the water, or if it was you, what was the longest time that you were kept underwater? I've always been you know, curious about that. Thanks. Indeed, it was not a stunt woman. <laughs> but I got stunt pay. <laughs> I remember oh when Tawny, God, no actually when Tawny, I think she was murdered first and she got stunt pay and I thought, ooh, this is good. 
Um, I don't have any idea how that towel fell, but it would be almost impossible for that towel to have remained where it was with all that was going on. It took us two days to shoot this, that scene, and we started with the dunking first with the latex on the face and all the grease and all of that. And um, I would say I was underwater not long enough for me to be scared because I had such trust in Dick Warlock who was playing Michael Myers, but a long enough time that it was extremely uncomfortable. I mean, I ended up with an ear infection and I'm sure you've all heard that the water was ice cold and you know, Leo and I were freezing in there, trying to be hot. Um, but it was, it, was, it was not scary because Dick had such control. As a stuntman, he, was, he is just, he's just marvelous. And the way on my head kind of became an extension of his arm, it was as though it was one piece. So when I was under the water, it looked so violent on, on screen, I think. I mean, it's really violent, and it was violent, getting slapped in the, the face with water, but, but he had such control of me that I never felt that I was in danger at all. Um, I knew that he was, in, he was just completely controlling every second of it. And we talked about it uh, beforehand, about how long it would be and all this. But the reality is we shot it for two days. So I was underwater for the better part of two days. Um, this question is for Tawny. Um, how was your death scene filmed and how long did it take to shoot? Let's see, I think it took one day and we filmed it um, wearing a harness with wires and a little pulley device going over to the corner where a grip just kind of went like this. <laughs> Pulled me up. Because <laughs> I heard you had to do it 15 times. Did is, I? Is, is that true? Really? Is that true? I, I, I read it on a, on a, a website. Yes, I, I read it on a website. It said no you took 15 No wonder days. I had such bruises. And you kept falling down and getting bruised bruises. and everything, you know, so. No, I was very bruised from that, absolutely. So quite relieved to know that it was stunt bay. Uh, let's see. So, oh, we got a question, yes. Yeah, my first question is for Gloria. Um, what was it like to work with Jamie Lee Curtis? How was that? And it was that her really her arm that was being shot uh, with the needle? Do you yeah. know? Yeah, 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 actually it was, actually. But the thing is, she is, I have to say, she's fabulous. I've worked with her twice. I did that, and then afterwards we did the uh, Death of a Centerfold, the Dorothy Stratton story. And um, I've seen her many, many times. And then I, I worked with her husband, too, in Spinal Tap. And she is absolutely the easiest person to work with in the world. She is giving, she's so generous, she's smart, she knows what she has to do, she uh, allows everybody their time, and she doesn't crowd you or upset you or, you know, no matter how much had to be done, she could figure out a way to make it work. She's very, very, very smart. And I, I thought she was terrific. And then when I worked with her again, it was a ple it's, it's a pleasure. And if you run into her, and it's 20 years later, and you run into her at an event or anything like that, she's just as lovely as if it was yesterday. She's a very, very lovely person. And one for, more question. First more day qu of shooting with Jamie Lee, uh, when it came time for the lunch break, I went outside to go to the lunch wagon, and I heard somebody call out saying, Cliff, do you want to eat that crap, or do you want to ask for steak and lobster? And she had a little hibachi set up where she was making steak and lobster instead of the stuff that was on the roach wagon. And the kind of person she is, I have a friend who takes care of an a, uh, invalid and occasionally takes him out to his hospital uh, visits. And he had him out at the hospital, I think it was in Santa Monica, because that's where the fellow lives. This was about six or seven months ago. And my friend went to get the car and told his buddy to wait by the uh, the wall, and he's uh, he's got a bad back. He's all hunched over, and he was in very, very bad pain. And this girl came up and said, "Can I help you? Look, you look like you're in bad shape, and you need some help." And he said, "Well, a friend of mine has gone to get the car." She said, "Well, I'll wait here for you and take care of you." And it was Jamie Lee. So that's the kind of person Jamie Lee is. Mm -hmm. You had another question? Just one more question. Um, if each of you could uh, tell, tell us which favorite moment is of yours in the movie, what? Your favorite moment, whether you were in it or not, if, of the movie, fr from the movie itself. Your favorite, your favorite moment. Start with Pamela, or you want to start over here? Well, I'm pretty <laughs> fond of the moment when Tawny's clogs fall off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that moment. I think that's probably my favorite moment. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that's my favorite moment. <laughs> How about your favorite moment that you're in? Oh, 
that yeah. I'm in? Yeah. Oh, well. Um, what comes to mind is not anything that had even any dialogue, but after we've done the scene that, uh, that um, we're getting in the, I'm getting in the car and we're gonna go, I have to, I'm late to work and Mrs. Alves is gonna kill me and all of that. Um, when I drive up to the hospital, there was just a moment where I get out of the car and put my clothes over my arm and look at my watch and every time I see it, the way I slam the door, just, I don't know, it just sticks with me. So whenever I look at it, I think, you know, that was good. <laughs> I, 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 that was my, my moment. <laughs> Donnie? Let's see, favorite moment. I think um, I have to admit that the death scene is probably my favorite moment. <laughs> um, it was really fun to do, and it's been such a, God, such a memorable scene that I've come to even be proud of it more now than I ever was when I first did it. Yeah, I, I feel that way too. I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I agree with Tawny. When, you, when we first did it, it was, it was kind of especially my my scene, my death scene was for me a little bit embarrassing to shoot and uh, there was a period where I regretted having done it and yet now I'm really proud to have been part of this project because the fans are just so amazing and so sweet and so lovely and the emails I get and the, the just the people that I've met, I, it's, it's just become a part of my life. So I really would like to actually thank you guys for being so supportive because... <laughs> It means a lot. Yeah. 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 Ditto that. Ditto that. It's been really great. Really nice. How about you, Cliff? I think maybe uh, my favorite moment was when I was watching the television monitor and uh, Pamela Shoup walked in. Mm -hmm. An actor has what they call an inner monologue. I think mine was very lascivious at the time. <laughs> and so that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> That, uh, that deleted scene uh, from TV when you Was said that, that deleted? The, 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 kid, the kid's on dope. It's kids on dope. <laughs> Come Punk's to think of it, what yeah. was I watching on that television screen? <laughs> I just, I turned it on, um, it was on Monday, I guess, and, and uh, I was thought, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to go to this convention on Friday, and I, and I turned it on, and there I was, yelling at one of the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, nurses, once again, and it's still my life, you know, because I still, I mean, I, I've been teaching at AFI for like six years, teaching directors and writers, I'm still yelling at people. And, um, but I think that, my, I always love when, when, when uh, Tawny shot that scene, that, I love the hot tub scene, because it's, it's always good, and it always scares the hell out of me <laughs> when I watch it, and I always love when, when the clogs come off like that, because it always makes me laugh, and I remember the day, and I remember the shooting, and I remember Rick spending so much time on it, and I love that, and I guess my favorite moment is just, it's just a one line in, in the movie, and I love when I walk in on Lance and uh, Jamie Lee, and I say, time's up, Jimmy. And that's my, one of my favorite moments, and I always love to say it. I have <clears throat> one comment and one question. Uh, having been in the hospital recently, I was sa I, I'm sad to say that, unfortunately, none of the nurses were as lovely and kind as the Haddonfield <laughs> Hospital. Um, but uh, number two, my question for Pamela is, were you aware that you would have a nude scene in the film, and how comfortable were you with doing that? Well, that's a good question, and that actually goes back to one of the very first comments, I think, in the, the beginning of this discussion, is the reason that I wasn't sure about doing the film was precisely because of the nude scene. I'd never done one, and um, I was really uncomfortable about it. I was, I'm sort of a shy person to begin with, so it, um, it was a hard decision, actually, for me to make to accept the role, because I just really wasn't sure I wanted to do that. But my agent at the time said, well, who do you think you are? Everybody else does them. Why would you think you're above that? And I thought, oh, gee, sorry, OK. <laughs> so um, it, it, was, it was a hard decision. But I was promised in my contract uh, a closed set. And there would only be a few people in, in the hot tub room when we shot it. I was also promised uh, a molding so that you couldn't see anything. Um, other than the top half. Well, <laughs> I counted 19 people in that teeny weeny room. There were 19 crew guys in that room. And on day one, and I think also on day two. Can and you blame them, people, it, really? Well, <laughs> it was a 19 little... 19 guys, <laughs> but I think very few teeny weenies. <laughs> well, to that end, 
Rick Rosenthal, I mean, I'm shy. What can I say? So it, <laughs> Rick Rosenthal said, well, look, if it'll make you feel any better, we'll all, you know, get undressed too. And, you know, we'll all do this together. And nobody would. The crew refused it. <laughs> not, not one person took off so much as a T-shirt. <laughs> Um, and then I was asked, actually, to take off the molding so, so as I entered the top, the hot tub. Um, and they were assuring me that, oh, well, you'll never see anything. And, but I'd been a professional long enough to know that it would end up in daily somewhere and, and some producers got somewhere, and I, and I flat out refused. Being sold in the dealer's room right now. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I didn't. And I have to say, Deborah Hill was amazing. She went to bat for me on that, and we held up shooting for quite a while because I just knew I wasn't going to do it, and it was in the contract. And she stuck up for me, and it went back and forth with conversations with the agent to, the, to Rick, to the producers, and she said, nope, we agreed to this, and you're going to have to find another way to shoot it. And so he did, and, and I really credit her with that. I, she was, I have not had the privilege of working with her again, but... It, as a woman producer, I think she was really an asset on that film. And I've always been grateful to her for that. Thank you very much. I just want to let you know, <clears throat> as a, an 11-year-old boy, to see that on the big screen. Are you uh, dating us? It, it, was, uh, it, it was, I appreciated it. just want to let you know. <laughs> I appreciated the effort that you made. And, uh, you know, enough said. Uh, I, I think we actually have time for one more question, and so... The first one to die in the movie that you guys starred in, um, after Michael steals the knife from those two elderly people, and um, he kills that girl. Why does he kill that girl? Because she doesn't seem to have anything to do with the movie or the plot. Why did Michael kill her? Do you know that? I think that's what Michael does. It was actually <laughs> I mean, I think that's his purpose, and I think he's proved it in as many movies as we've seen Michael, that that's what, that's what he likes. You know, I mean, he'd have gotten some other people there if he could have, too, you know. Then he goes off, you know, anything that's in his way. In the world of Halloween, that is the correct answer. <laughs> However, the real answer is <laughs> uh, it was a, one of the reshot scenes. I mean, they just, they wanted more gore, and it was one of the scenes that Carpenter added for... I remember the nanny. Yeah. I'd just like to know about Halloween, too, with the news breaking out that Michael Myers was coming after um, Jamie Lee Curtis. How come the news, how come there was not an extra security guard blocking the front door <laughs> because there's only one security guard which is you Cliff but it's just within reasonable doubt like to know that the, the news intensi intensified about the story and she was at that hospital how come there's just no extra security heightened just they, 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 they didn't weren't, have the they, budget I don't think they were as good as they are now <laughs> they didn't have the budget for more security guards now. that's it and you all remember and I know everybody knows that Dana Carvey was in that movie and it's so funny because I remember sitting and talking to him because we had a lot of time to talk and then years later I, he, you know I look at his credits and he never said Halloween 2 I can't wait to run into him one day it amazes me the, the, the amount of people that see this and the influence it has about uh Seven months ago, I was going down the Pasadena Freeway, and a fellow cut me off. I hit my brakes. I hear a screech. I look behind me. I see a car spinning out of control. It lands in the divider and catches fire. I get off at the next off ramp, and I call the 911, and I turn around and come back the other way and park across from all this carnage and mayhem, and I, uh, I'm waiting. I said, find one of those uh, officers over there from the highway patrol and tell them I got all the information they need on how this accident happened because... I was right in front, and the guy cut in front of me caused the whole thing. So they held me up for about 45 minutes, and finally this highway patrolman came behind me, parked his car. I rolled down my passenger window. He leaned in, and he says, before I ask you anything about this accident, what does Michael Myers look like under that mask? <laughs> Well, on that note, I think we'll uh, wrap it up. Let's give, a, let's give them a big hand to cast the Hallway, too. Thank you very much.